going to get ready to start worship. It's uh, after 10. We're going to begin with a prayer. God of grace, you have given us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and voices to sing your praise. Fill us with your spirit that we may celebrate your glory and worship you in spirit and truth through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Welcome to visitors in person and on Zoom. Welcome to everybody this morning as we begin our worship on the fifth Sunday of Easter. In this Easter season, we have been invited to imagine God's vision fulfilled in the word and imagine a vision for Shepherd of the Hills. This morning, we actually have two scriptures that have vision in them, Peter and Cornelius' vision in the book of Acts and John of Patmos' vision in the Revelation but essentially also God's vision that we love God and love one another. With our Easter season liturgy, we sing praise to God, and near the end of the service, we ask God to be our vision, the Lord of our hearts. And now we will begin with the welcome statement as shared with us by Jeannie. Welcome to longtime Lutherans, Christians from every tradition and people new to the faith. Welcome to all who have no church home, want to follow Christ, have doubts, or do not believe. Welcome to new visitors and old friends. Welcome to people of every age and size, color and culture, gender identity, sexual orientation and marital status, ability and challenge. Welcome to believers, questioners and questioning believers. This is a place where you are welcome to celebrate and sorrow, rejoice and recover. This is a place where lives are made new. Welcome on this day. Join me in the call to worship. A rumor about an empty tomb and a missing body. Yet this was the testimony of the women, and then Peter saw that it was true. It means life will never be the same. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. We'll be singing the fourth verse of ELW 859, Praise to the Lord. Breath. 
Let's pray. O oh God, you teach us that without love, our actions gain nothing. Pour into our hearts your most excellent gift of love, that made alive by your spirit, we may know goodness and peace through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and we're going to have the word for all ages. So if some of the young people want to come closer about, and then I need, if that's, that's good, that's good. <laughs> so Jeannie and Sandra are going to help me, and I'm going to imagine this. So today, essentially the sermon and the Word for All Ages, we're going to step into Acts chapter 10 even though we're going to hear from Acts chapter 11. And here, we need to hold this way up. So, Peter, when we get into Acts 10, Peter goes up on a roof and he begins to pray. Why don't you go up on the step there? Thank you yeah, so much. We'll come back a little bit more. Okay. Peter goes up on the roof and he begins to pray. Thank you. And then he gets hungry. And while his lunch is being made for him, excuse me, he falls asleep and he has a vision. And what he has is this vision of a sheet coming down from heaven like this. And it's filled with, what's it filled with? Animals. animals, all sorts of animals. So for Peter, he's only supposed to eat certain types of animals. But he hears this voice that says, kill and eat all of them. And he goes, oh, no, God, I can't, because that's, that's against the law. I cannot eat what is considered unclean. So then the sheet goes up again, and then it comes down again, and the voice says the same thing, and Peter says the same thing. Oh, no, God, I can't, I can't. And then the sheet goes up again, and then it comes down again, and then he hears this voice. God says, you shall not call what I have made unclean or profane that is that's peter's vision and then he has to figure out what it means so we can put that back over there thank you very much so trying to figure out what that means it's kind of like wow you think everything that god has made is from god yeah, yeah, so that's the idea. So we have to remember when we look around, we see that God is in everything. And so how does that make you think? So what I'm going to leave you to, you can think about this yourself. You don't have to answer me. How do we then look at all creation? And what do we see when we look at creation? We look for God. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, thank you for your goodness that permeates all creation and help us see it in each other and help us to make others be the word of grace that others might see this in each other as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you want any of the animals, you can. If you want to play with, if you want to play with any of the animals, you can. First reading is from Acts 11. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when people went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain to them step by step. And this next part of the story will be told in the sermon. And then we re-enter the text at verse 15. 
And as I, Peter, began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was that I, that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given, even to the Gentiles, the repentance that leads to life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Revelations 21. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the Holy Spirit, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water, as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. As we rise, we will sing the acclamation for the gospel twice before and after the gospel. Gospel according to John, the 13th chapter. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. God has been glorified in him. God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am only with you a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. So from Acts 10, it's definitely a story that we all need to know, especially on days like today, when there seems to be so much divisiveness in the world, but the goodness of God remains. So in Caesarea, which was a town on the Mediterranean Sea that was an administrative center of the Roman government at that time, there lived a man by the name of Cornelius, who was a centurion, which meant that he commanded about 6,000 soldiers. Cornelius was actually a devout man who feared God along with all of his household, and he gave generously alms to the poor, and he prayed constantly to God. And one day, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the angel of God appeared before him. And the angel said, Cornelius, 
Well, Cornelius was scared. I mean, wouldn't you be? And he, he goes, well, what, my Lord? He says, Cornelius, now send for Simon Peter, who is staying at the home of Simon the Tanner in Joppa in a house by the sea. So Cornelius called two of his servants and one of his most devout soldiers, and he told them the story and sent them off to Joppa to bring back Simon Peter so that he might speak to the people in Caesarea. So about noon the next day, the three are approaching the city of Joppa, and that's when Peter goes up on the roof to pray, and he has the vision that we all saw in the words for all ages. So after the vision, Peter is trying to make sense out of it. What? What does this mean, this vision? When God says, you shall not call what I have made profane or unclean. But as he was in that moment, another, he heard a voice again that said, there are now three men arriving at the door, and they've come to get you to take you to go with them, and you must go with them. So Peter goes down and greets them and says, tell me what's brought you here. And they tell the story of Cornelius' vision. And he says, come in, and they stay the night. Then the next morning, they get up and they go to Caesarea. So it's Peter, and it's the two servants of Cornelius, and it's the devout soldier of Cornelius, and some Jewish believers in Christ go along with them and they walk until the following day, and they come to Caesarea, where Cornelius sees Peter, and he runs, and he, he bows down before Peter, and Peter says, Cornelius, look, I'm, I'm just a human being like you. Please get up. And then he sees all these people gathered around to hear him speak, and Peter says, I know now. I, I don't, you know this. I'm a Jewish man, and it's actually unlawful for me to associate with people who are not Jewish. But I know now that God has said that I should not consider anybody who is beyond the Jewish community profane or unclean. So now I, I have come, when I heard you requested I come, you, I came at once. And then Cornelius says, it's really kind that you have come. And we are here to hear, here to hear what you have to say. So Peter begins to speak, and he says, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in people who love God, who loves their neighbor as themselves, they are acceptable to God. Now hear the message that God sent to the people of Israel the preaching of peace by Jesus Christ. He is our Lord. He is the Lord of all. That message that spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, with the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And Jesus went around doing good and healed people who were oppressed by the devil. And we were witnesses, those who were with him, of what he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. But then they put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all, but to some of us, some of us who were chosen to be witnesses. And he ate and he drank with us after he had been raised from the dead. He commanded us to say this to you, that he is the one who is ordained to judge the living and the dead. The prophets testify to him. They tell of the one who people can believe in who will bring them forgiveness of sins. As Peter was speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were gathered there. And the, the Jewish believers in Christ were astounded because the people began to extol God and speak in tongues. And Peter, probably shocked himself, said, who can withhold the waters of baptism from those who have received the Holy Spirit 
just as us. So Peter ordered that they would be baptized, and they were. And Peter and his friends stayed with Cornelius for a couple more days. So then we have another vision beyond the visions of Cornelius and Peter. We have the vision of John of Patmos today, who says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth has passed away. And I saw the holy city coming out from God like a bride adorned for her husband. And then I heard the voice from the throne saying, see the home of God is with the people. God dwells with them and they are children of God. And God wipes every tear from their eye. There will be no more mourning or pain or death for the old order of things has passed away. And the one, then the one seated on the throne says, see, I am making things new. I am the alpha and the omega and the beginning and the end. And he said to the thirsty, He said to the thirsty, I will give the water of life. From the spring of life. Who can withhold the waters of baptism for us today to renew us in our faith? Amen. The hymn of the day will be ELW 377, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen. We'll sing verses 1, 4, and 5.
Let us join together and say the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe the God, the Father and Mother Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in the prayers. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Loving God, lead us to follow your spirit rather than our own prejudices or desires as the church cares for one another. Open us to receive Perceive your gifts in those we least expect. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Inspire us to praise you through the beauty and majesty of the natural world around us, including Tilden Park and San Francisco Bay. Urge us toward more deliberate care of the world you have made. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Humble the rulers of nations before your splendor. Direct them to the people who need their attention most and turn them from the temptation to hoard wealth or power. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Hasten to dwell among those who are in pain or distress. Gifford, Florence, Dorla, Meg, Ava, Lillian, Nina, Nina, Marguerite, Henri, Helen, Debbie, Nat, Tom, Patrick, John, and Teddy, Tom, and Candy. As Christ enters our deepest suffering, remain with those experiencing despair and great need. Merciful God, receive our prayer. By your love, heal us, convict us, and renew us. Bring an end to racism in our churches and communities. Let everyone know your goodness by the love we show one another. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For whom and what else do the people of God pray? If you are on Zoom, please unmute to share your prayers. For those in the sanctuary, please go to your nearest mic. I pray for my mother's surgery next week. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Pray for my late mother's birthday, that is today. Merciful God, receive our prayer. I pray for Sandy Elstrom as she struggles with cancer. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. I pray for the families of the victims of those in Buffalo. Merciful God. I pray for all those who live with the violence that is happening in our world, and I hope that God will give contentment and, and bless them. Merciful God, receive our prayer. I pray particular, pray particular prayers. So prayers for Meg um, after she's had some health issues. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Give us a place in the diverse company of your beloved saints. Teach us the value of each person's identity and bless us with a shared identity as your children, kindred of Christ. Merciful God, receive our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. amen.
Even in our world today with the challenges that we have, we can continue to have vision and breathe, dream, and we can continue to believe that God is with us, that we can celebrate that with a holy ruckus. So the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share that peace. 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 Peace, peace. peace be with you. Peace, peace all. Peace. Now it's time for thank offering. And during our Easter season, our thank offering is going to Lutheran World Relief for the purpose of sending financial support and prayers for the people of the Ukraine. And if you have any thank offerings to either unmute on Zoom or go to your nearest mic. Uh, I'm thankful for my mom. It's her birthday today, um, so yay. <laughs> and uh, I'm also thankful for ice cream because it's good. <laughs> I'm thankful for a good trip back home to Germany. I'm thankful that I get to talk to both of my siblings, uh, one in Germany and one in London today. I'm thankful for, this is Sandra, I'm thankful for the, although I'd love rain, the beautiful weather that we're having. I'm thankful for the Galakowski birthdays. It's so nice yeah. to see them and it's, I'm very thankful to see Candy here with us today. It's, it's nice to start seeing more people here. I'm thankful I had a really good week. I got to go visit friends first in Morro Bay and have some really incredible experience after experience. And then um, this week I celebrated my 20th anniversary of ordination and I'm still celebrating. And it's it just have been really um, connecting with people who were with me when we started the Lutheran ministry to nursing homes. And I had wonderful coffee times and a great dinner with my mentor, uh, Ross Merkel, who is the visionary behind the Lutheran ministry to nursing homes. So it was a really good week and I'm very thankful for that. I'm thankful that I got to spend uh, Mother's Day with my and my sister and attended church with my parents. It was like old times, my sister, me, and my parents in church. Um, my dad is 91 and can no longer read a hymnal. And the greatest part of the day was sitting next to him during communion when the um, childhood hymn, I am Jesus' little lamb, came on and he knew every word, every word. And he has dementia. So all four verses, he, he sang that with us. I am thankful for Natalia, whose birthday is Wednesday. I'm thankful for Sylvia, my birthday twin. Is that right, Sylvia? Yes. Happy birthday. <laughs> and I am uh, very thankful on the occasion of Pastor's 20th uh, anniversary of her ordination. I'm very thankful for Pastor and for all of her many gifts, and we are so blessed to have you. Please join me in prayer. Risen one, as you broke bread with the disciples on the shore, meet us now in this meal. Nourish us to follow you, using our gifts to feed the hungry and tend the weary. And all for your sake. Amen. Now's our time for announcements. If anybody on Zoom has an announcement, this would be a good time for you to unmute and share it. And then if you're in person, uh, you please go to the microphone that's nearest to you to make the announcement. Tomorrow, Tomorrow Monday, Monday, the, the uh, Shepherd of the Hills Book, Book Club, Club will be meeting on Zoom, Zoom at 6.30 p.m. Um, if, anybody if anybody would like, would the, like link, the link, they can email me. I'm in the directory. 
And also the announcement is at Shepherd of the Hills. And the book that we'll be discussing is As I Lay Dying by William Faulkner. Okay, announcement. On the 21st of May, it's on a Saturday uh, coming up, we have a team from to distribute food along with hospital. Um, so, the, if when you come for communion, you can circle around the back and put your offering on the offering plate, and there's also the container, little con box for thank offerings as well. One more announcement. Okay. Sorry, I keep Grant. Yes. <laughs> You're wearing your sunglasses. <laughs> um, on behalf of the call committee, I just want to update uh, that we finalized the draft of the. Yeah. Folks on Zoom could not uh, hear that. Hear that. Volunteer to help with organizing a fundraiser here on uh, in the near term future. I was uh, able to meet the director of the jazz band that is performing uh, or that is practicing here in church on Thursday, and she offered us a free concert uh, as a fundraiser here in church. Mm -hmm. So I do have some ideas around that, but I do need help, um, and we could uh, make this uh, to maybe subsidize some of our activities or even some of the things around the building and grounds here that we have coming up. Thank you, Johannes. Okay, one more announcement. So the great storage room cleanup is continuing. A carload of items went down the hill and I was able to give them away through my Facebook giveaway group. Um, uh, there's a lot of teachers on those groups that are taking materials bead kits and things. We still have plenty of items in the storage that are available for crafts going forward or anything you need. <laughs> it's there. <laughs> uh, so it's going to continue. Please go down and look through them. Next Sunday, Rochelle's going to look through the books to see if there's some that she can use for her school. And then I'm hoping to get some help sorting through other books to see which ones we want to keep and maybe which we can donate to a, a book drive, maybe some scouts or a school are accepting books. So it's going pretty good. And the pile is diminishing. <laughs> Nice. Oh, one of the little plastic elephants? Yeah. yeah, okay. Well, that's good if you see people who are visiting, but I'm not like broadcasting that come to our, this church and pick things up. So that's wonderful. I was wondering what to do with that elephant. So, yay. Yeah. That's wow. great. That's so, awesome. so, <laughs> so, for people on Zoom, uh, Johanna shared that we have a, like a two year old child that's coming to play in the playground. So they're talking about the toys or the elephant. <laughs> so so uh, that, that's a wonderful thing to, to see. Yes, and Sandra Scott. Sorry, one more. Um, talking about um, uh, volunteering, I had a, something in the life of Soth for Dorothy Day House. They do have a long list of, uh, a bit, you know, times and places where you can volunteer and they're also coming up with um, since Emeryville and possibly People's Park is no longer going to be a housing or a place for unhoused people. Uh, we're going to be um, hoping to go out in groups of two and three 
to bring um, whatever's needed to people who are living out of their RVs or, or tents or just on the streets. So that's just a place also, and they are, they're really good. I, I like being there, so. Yes, thank you, Sandra. Um, we are invited to join the people of University Lutheran Chapel for an Ascension, Ascension evening celebration. That would be Thursday, May 26th, and it's actually gonna be held at Inspiration Point. And it will have a lovely liturgy led by their visiting pastor from Dublin, Ireland. So um, 6 p.m., I believe it's 6 p.m. I'll, I'll put, it'll go in the life of soft. I'll put, when I get more information, I'll let you know. But it's that evening, I think it's 6 p.m., May 26th. Okay, checking, any other announcements? Okay, if not, we will go ahead and prepare for communion. Please stand as you are able. And we start with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy living and loving one, we praise you for you are great. You created the earth and all that is beyond. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters and your people of Israel from the bonds of slavery and for sending your son to be our redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus who living among us healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread and gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it for all to eat, saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave the cup for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant of my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Take and drink, do this in remembrance of me. Breathe your spirit on us, on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we might live as your chosen ones, clothed in righteousness of Christ. Through him all honor and glory are yours, almighty creator, redeemer, and the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Be prepared to say the Lord's Prayer, so those who are on Zoom are invited to a mute, as we will say the Lord's Prayer in the language of our choice. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from the evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We are going to go ahead and have our blessing. May you delight in God as God delights in you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
as you are able. Oops. May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bless us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Please join me in prayer. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Our post-communion hymn is ELW 793, Be Thou My Vision. We'll be singing verses 3 and 4. <laughs> And now the benediction. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Bringing new life and new hope. Thanks be to God. God.